Look, it's week number eight here in the Greater Miami Conference. Tonight, we're going to see the league's best team and the league's best shooter. It's Fairfield and Lakota West next on Chatterbox Plus. And good evening to you. Along with the coach, Sean Van Winkle, I'm Jeff Kim. As we're just mere moments away from the start of this one, the last time out for the Fairfield Indians at 12-1. They ran their winning streak to five, defeating Lakota East on the road last Tuesday, 61-54. Ray Coney had a game high, 19 points, while Colin Colbert, a double-double, 10 points and 11 rebounds. The Indians won the battle on the boards, 33 to 26. Meanwhile, Lakota West took a two-game losing streak, defeating Oak Hills on Tuesday, 64-52. Nathan Dudukovich, a team high, 23 points in the win. So as we bring in the coach, Sean Van Winkle, I know I just brought, uh, just spouted off some offense, but I guess tonight we're going to be thinking about defense a little it bit could, more. It could, yeah. We got an exciting matchup tonight. Extremely high, high level players on both teams. The last time these two played each other, the Lakota West Firebirds sent the Indians home during the state tournament, which I am sure that's been bulletin board material for the Indians in the off season. We're going to see a lot of scoring, like you said. Lakota West gets to the foul line more than anybody in the GMC, and Fairfield shoots and makes more threes than anyone in the GMC. But like you said, I think there's going to be a lot to be uh, about defense tonight as well. Well, absolutely. You know, we could talk wax politically, politically about offense with the different things. Uh, Dudukovic on the one side for West, and obviously you have – four fantastic sh uh, shooters, or even at times five for Fairfield, but who's going to prevent who, and I think that's part of your keys to the ball game. It, it is. We'll jump right into Fairfield. They're the home team tonight, and the keys to victory for Fairfield. The first one is defend without fouling. Lakota West, like I said before, they get to the foul line more than anyone in the league, which means they are attacking the basket, and Fairfield wants to not, not foul them and play solid defense. The next thing, the number two key is for Fairfield, is to find shooters in transition. Lakota West shoots the ball really, really quick. So if you're able to get back in transition defense, if you're Fairfield, if you're able to get back in transition defense, stop the ball, guard for three or four passes, you're probably gonna guard that possession because West likes to shoot it quick. The other thing that Fairfield wants to do, Jeff, is they wanna attack the driving lanes. What does that mean? Lakota West plays a lot of 2-3 zone. So they want to get into the gaps of that zone, especially off reversals, and attack the driving lanes, and don't settle for so many threes. Fairfield, they shoot a lot, but they also have the ability to get into gaps. And those are three things. If Fairfield does those things tonight, they're going to have a good chance to pull away for another GMC victory. Before we get to the other side, you just brought up transition, and I think if you're Fairfield, you got to be sweating a little bit when you think about Nathan Dudukovic, who can score on all three planes. He can, and me and you have seen him before. It, it used to be if you could just get him and guard him at the three-point line, you were good. But now he's attacking the rim, he's doing pull-up jumpers, he's a three-level scorer, and he has been really, really hard to handle for a lot of people, and we'll be talking a ton about him. But looking over at the Lakota West side, the three keys to victory for Lakota West tonight, the very first thing Coach Leon said is, we got to rebound. Rebound, rebound. And rebounding out of a zone, Jeff, is hard to do because you're rebounding space and not people. But that's what they got to do for Lakota West. And then the, the next thing for Lakota West is run strong, patient sets in the, uh, in the half court. Now, Jeff, don't fall down when I say this. But Coach Leon says he wants to slow this game down tonight. <laughs> now, he said that, but he also told me and you they weren't going to play man-to-man -man against East either, right, right. and they played man the whole night. But he did say he wanted to try to slow it down and be patient. And the third thing is play solid half-court defense. Fairfield has so many weapons, but you got to be just solid on all of them. We talked before, do you run at people sometimes and double-team if they have great players? Well, Fairfield has like six or seven guys that can score, so you got to key on team defense. So being able to play solid half-court defense is going to be a huge key for Lakota West tonight. Back to the rebounding point for just a moment. Lakota West comes into this ball game, averaging about 26 and a half boards a ball game. Pretty good, but they're out rebounding their opposition by six and a half. That's strong. That's huge. And in rebounding, rebounding and shot selection or field goal percentage are two keys most of the time for any team to have success. 
okay, and, and that's going to be a big one tonight. You get two really good coaches, two veteran coaches, um, and, and Coach Leon and Coach Wyrick. So it's going to be a fundamental game. It's going to be a fun game. It's going to be a fun game. A lot of tape on both teams right now, so nobody's going to see something they haven't seen, but it's going to be exciting. Before we head to a timeout, again, Fairfield, 12-1 and one coming into this ball game. Lakota West in at 6-5. and five. When we return, we'll bring you a history lesson, the starting lineups, and the opening tip-off. And we'll bring it to you next here on Chatterbox Plus. A year ago was a memorable one. It was an instant classic in Beckett Ridge on February 12, 2021, as Fairfield won the GMC title, escaping with a win in double overtime, 81-76. Kelvin Turner set a school record, since broken, but a school record at that time, with 37 points in that contest. Logan Woods poured in 18 for Fairfield, en route to joining the 1,000-point club last year, and that gave Fairfield a two-game winning streak in the series. And it's a series that Fairfield owns a slight edge in. In the last 10 games of the series, six wins to four. Along with the coach, Sean Van Winkle, I'm Jeff Kim. We're just mere moments away from the start of this one here at the arena in Fairfield. But he can't wait for this one. Fairfield's got a perfect conference record on the line. They do, and, and to a couple guys to look at, Jeff. Amir Rogers. Amir Rogers doesn't get a ton of pub per se because he doesn't score a ton of points but his interior defense for Fairfield this year has been a huge huge difference and on the other side I want to look at Bryson Curry the point guard for Lakota West who's a solid solid point guard coming into his own and tonight in order for them to have a chance Bryson's got to control the ball because he's going against the four-headed monster of four guards that are incredible for the Fairfield Indians. The last time Lakota West won in this series, it was on February 23rd, 2021, in the sectional semis, as you alluded to in our open partner, 60 to 52. Firebirds officially, while I, I actually went back and watched tape on this to confirm otherwise, in the scorecard, the Fairfield, uh, the Firebirds officially committed zero turnovers in that game. That is inaccurate, but it was still a win for Lakota West. Kelvin Turner that night, of course, had the game high with 19 points. Yeah, and you, you, we, you and I talked as, as we were prepping for this game, and you asked that question. I don't think I've ever seen a game <laughs> where a team doesn't have any turnovers, but the best team in the league from, from turning the ball over or not turning it over is Fairfield. I mean, they take care of the ball. They assist more than they turn over, which is incredible. Um, I think you got the stats right there. Yeah, so they, in fact, they, they're, they're only giving up uh, just about 10 uh, turnovers, turnovers a game, ball game. And assistant really assist 13, which is, I mean, if you have more assists than turnovers, that's amazing. But to see zero like we've seen in that box score, <laughs> that wasn't it. That wasn't it. So We're, we're going to call that creative scorekeeping that night here in that tournament game. It was that second round game. And there are nights, a partner, while we have a moment to talk about this, we're just about a month away from tournament time. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you have a team like Fairfield who was a surprise GMC winner have a first round bye, and they came out a little flat in that second round game against West, and West took them to the hill. They did. Uh, and, 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 you almost want to have that opening round game. Yeah, you. you I was shocked that Lakota West jumped in their bracket at the time, but they felt it was a good matchup. And, and, you know, it, it, it proved to be right. Coach Leon's been doing it 28 years, Jeff, so he kind of knew what he was doing there. And with that, we'll step aside for our nation's anthem. When we return, we'll have the starting lineups and the opening tip-off next on Chatterbox Plus. If you're ready now, let's give you the starting lineups here in this ball game. First for the home team, the Fairfield Indians at 12-1. and 8-0 in the GMC, ranked 10th in the AP Division I poll. Their head coach is DJ Wyrick. Third year with the program, 33-22. and 22. Four guard look, zero is Ray Coney, 6'2", a junior. Two is Deshaun Krim, the Krim Reaper, at 6'2", a junior. Three is Colin Tolbert, 6'2", a senior. 11 is Logan Woods at 6'4", a senior. And up front, it's 24, Amir Rogers, the lone forward, at 6'7", a junior. 
On the other side for Lakota West, the Firebirds are at six and five, three and four in the GMC. Their head coach is Jim Leon in his fourth year with the program, 41 and 44 in his 28th year overall. Three guard look, one is Bryson Curry, five foot ten, a sophomore. Three is William Layfield, six foot four, a senior. 13 is Nathan Dudukovic, 6'3", a junior. Up front it's 10. Jason Lavender at 6'3", a junior. And the other forward is 21, Christopher Barber, 6'3", a junior. Fairfield comes in scoring about 68 points a ball game. They only give up 50.2. That's a differential of nearly 18, 17.8. On the other side for Lakota West, they average 67.7 points a ball game. They give up 62 and a half. They got a differential of plus five. So as we bring in the coach once again, both teams, as we mentioned at the top, even though we're at, we have a decided focus on defense, both teams know how to fill up the rim. They do. I mean, again, guards, guards, guards. Some of the best guards in the whole city and, and also Southwest Ohio. Jeff, if you don't mind, Coach Leon, 28 years as a head coach, used to be the head coach of Woodward in the early 90s, had a rough week. You know, he had one of his players uh, that he coached at at Woodward in the early 90s. He was shot and killed in Cincinnati. It's been a rough week for Coach Leon. I asked him, you're still coming to the game? He said, I have to be there, but i got to be honest with you, my heart's somewhere else right now. So let's everybody just uh, have a little prayer there for Coach Leon as he is going through some very, very tough times right now. But what will get him thinking about something different is what he's always really good at, get right here on the sideline. It's a welcome distraction. It is, it is. So hats off to Coach Leon because of all the effort and stuff that he's put towards that situation as well. Well, I think to your point, Coach, and I, I do call you Coach with respect, once you're a coach, you never stop being a coach to people. You know, and, I mean, it's, uh, he was one of his favorite players. And, uh, so it's a rough week. Fairfield in the home white tonight. Lakota West in the red. Tap belongs to Fairfield, and away we go here at the arena. So, again, we thought Lakota West was going to play a 2-3 zone. They open up in man-to-man, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> go figure. It's Ray Coney, top of the key. As they attack the north bucket, still staying outside. Krim, the floater, too strong off the back iron. He gets it back, and it's taken away from him by Jason Lavender. Here comes West on the move, their first opportunity. The drive by Layfield, kicks it out. Christopher Barber to the rack, he goes 2 nothing West. Nice attack by Barber again. They're getting to the foul line more than anybody in the GMC, and that's because they attacked the rim, and Barber with a good attack right off the first play of the game for the uh, Firebirds. Barber averaging eight points a ball game. Two nothing to start things off here in the first minute. Fairfield getting into their Buffalo offense, which is some ball screen actions. Colin Tolbert, mid post, dumps it off. Beauty. Logan Woods, his first dish, we're tied up. Logan Woods is opening up on Dudukovic. Again, I think Logan Woods is right now the early favorite for defensive player of the year in the GMC. And he's gonna have his hands full tonight. It's Lavender outside, top of the key. Waiting to see Dudukovic get an offensive touch. Yeah, if they're going to just spread out and pass and cut, it's going to be hard for Dudukovic to get shots. Nathan finally gets the ball and plays it back. It's to Barber. Barber whips it inside. The shot put up too strong for Bryson Curry. Three for Tober. A long water shot. Too long off the back iron. And we head the other way. One and done. Tied up at two here at the arena. Spacing out, five out, straight cuts. Curry comes back for the fall, center jump circle. Not many off the ball screens here. You had mentioned at the top of our broadcast as the Dukovic makes his move that West is going to play a little bit more deliberately on offense in the half court set. Yeah, this is exactly what Coach Leon said he was going to do. I don't think I've ever seen and a half-court possession, Lakota West recently passed six, seven times, but they're doing it right now on this possession. Curry out to Layfield, top of the key, too long. Probably not the shot they wanted, a contested three, but they were patient on offense. Amir Rogers the rebound, he clears it off. By the way, Amir in this matchup on senior night in Beckert Ridge a year ago, 14 points, 16 rebounds, the double team and a hold down low. 
Yeah, I think Amir Rogers is the key to this team. Doesn't score a lot of points, but gets rebounds, plays defense on the interior as we get the Fairfield Indians taking the ball out of bounds. They run their one four flat set here, three or four different options out of it. That's the first on Barber, by the way. First team foul on Lakota West. Woods top of the key, he fires and off the mark. A little contact down on the block. Not sure. Layfield looked a little disgusted on that, though he'll be the beneficiary as we yeah. head the other way. Looked like they called Rodgers over the back, and that might be his first as well. That was kind of a late whistle. So team fouls are even at one. As we come up on the five-minute mark here of this first quarter, tied at two. Fairfield, looking at, forget, yeah. beg your pardon. Fairfield tries to keep the ball on one side of the court when it's up on the high side there. They try to force it baseline once they get him on the sideline. Are you surprised that Dukovic hasn't taken a shot yet? Well, they're not running much for him. I mean, they're just running five out, passing and cutting. Um, here's some screens for him. Dukovic rolls off the screen, stuck on the elbow. Back out, Layfield to the rack, he goes in and out. He gets the rebound, it's loose on the floor, and it's a fair field position, maybe, and we've got a foul. Yeah, Tolbert gets on the ground, and you know I love those plays. And he was, as he was trying to pass, he got fouled. But a lot of times, Jeff, first one to the ground is going to get the ball, and that was what Tolbert did for the Indians. And Tolbert's had a great year, man. I mean, we were talking yeah. about him this week on the phone when we were getting ready for this game. I mean, he is one of the most well-rounded basketball players in the league. First on Layfield, and Colin Tolbert, by the way, is fourth in the league in scoring at just under 16 a ball game as he handles the ball, and we got a little hand check down low. That's a design play that Fairfield does, a little isolation where they'll run everybody to the left side. Tolbert will have that whole right side to work, and uh, he does a great job of getting angles. By the way, that's too quick on Christopher Barber. Do you sit him now at 425? You have to. Yep, you have to now. They bring in number 12 here, who's Derek Jackson, sophomore, big kid for Fairfield. Has for, started uh, a few games. Yeah, for Lakota West, I'm sorry. He's a glue guy, Jeff. He does all the little things. Forward off the screen, penetrates, lost it. It's still loose and given up to the newcomer, Jackson. A little over dribble there. Jackson gives it up, gets it back, left of the lane and back outside, they'll reset. Curry plays over to Jason Lavender. The Dukovic side pocket right for three. He knocks it down. With a hand in his face. Knocks it. You cannot give him one inch, and he will hit it. Young man is shooting a ton. 38.5% from behind the arc. He gives West the lead at 5-2. to two. Averaging 28 points a ball game, and yes, that's leading the GMC. Tolbert, stuck on the free throw line, draws the double team. He gets it back. Good hands, and he keeps it alive. That's two possessions in a row. Tolbert's over dribbled as Wood shoots the three. And he misfires. They left it a little short. Fairfield a little cold from long range to start things off. Yep. Again, this is not what Coach Wyrick wanted. He wanted to attack the basket early and not settle for threes, but. Layfield on the dribble. Checked by Coney. Jackson comes back for the ball. Three minutes left to go here in this first quarter. Five to two, Lakota West. The lead in the ball right now. Off the hands of Phipps and he lost it. And it's taken away. Here comes Fairfield on the move. Bronson into the ball game. Dumps it down low in the score. It goes to Colin Tolbert, his first deuce of the night. Great pass. One point ball game and back to a possession for the team leading the ball game in Lakota West. Jackson looked like he was going to screen a little bit for Dudukovic there, and Jackson not much of a ball handler as he turns it over. Over and back. Over and 2.28 left to go here in this first period, 5-4. to four. We've only seen one tie in this ball game. No lead changes as of yet. A stark contrast to the game you and I saw a week ago right. over at Ross. Where there were about 15 lead changes. <laughs> number 35, Michael Swanson comes in for the Indians. Big boy inside, senior. Look to him to screen a lot. Six foot six. Three for Tolbert, too long. Another three. Layfield gets the rebound and he'll control. Up ahead for Curry. Team's leader in assist with three and a half. 
out to Jackson. Out to the baseline, stuck, draws the double and plays back. Nice touch pass. Layfield for three! He knocks it down! Great call on a touch pass. Layfield, Layfield can shoot. I mean, he can shoot the ball. Under two to play here in this first quarter. And West doubles their pleasure, eight to four. Layfield shoots about 48% from three. Still cold outside for Bronston. And we've got a, a foul down low or a tie up. It's a tie up. Fairfield's ball. Or no, Lakota West ball, sorry. So Derek Jackson getting tied up with Michael Swanson. You, met, you mentioned Swanson, six foot six, a senior. And you couple him, I, I'm kind of surprised that we've not seen a set with him and Amir Rogers. But when you have such great scoring depth at the guard spot, you really can't do that because Jackson misfires on three. Yeah, Dukovic taps it out, but it's saved by Fairfield. And here they go on the run. Fairfield ran a one, hey, they ran their one, two, two press right there. Okay, did they get a turnover? No, but they got a quick shot, which is a turnover. And Coach Wyrick has been running at one, two, two a lot this year. Not necessarily to get a steal, but teams seem to beat it and then shoot fast, which is like a turnover. Bryson Curry picks up the personal, and the fouls are accumulating for Lakota West. That's team foul number four of this first quarter. Tolbert between the rings, outside. The Krim Reaper strikes, no, too long off the back iron. They'll save it up front. Tolbert will fire three, right wing, he left it short. And again, they're a little cold from the outside. Very cold from the outside as we got a minute to go here in the first. Layfield who had the last three, has the ball, plays Bryson Curry. Checked by Tolbert, now to Jackson. We mentioned deliberate half-court play. That's what we're seeing now. Woods got his hand up in his face now. Dudukovic to the wreck. He goes. He left it short. He tried to get the rebound, and we got a foul underneath. They called that on Dudukovic over the back. So Dudukovic picks up his first, and that's now five team fouls of this first half. Right now, the way they're going with fouls, you're going to run out of players at some point. <laughs> they're, they're definitely going into their bench. Indians with 42 seconds here. I don't. I doubt if they'll take the last shot, but they might. Now we're down to 30. Well, down by two possessions. You would think that, and you have no fluidity on offense. Yeah. Nice Here's little set Grim play. Outside, three from the corner. They love that play, Jeff. They drive that. Strong on the weak side and kick it to the shooter in the corner. So Bronston off the bench gets three, and we got a one-point ball game, and we may see a last possession now. Yeah, this will be a last shot. Curry stuck. They work down low, and we've got a foul underneath. As Jason Lavender was trying to work his way in, and they are going to give him the charge. Nice little acting job, but... <laughs> Very good acting job. I'd get Woods back in. Here he comes. Woods with eight seconds. I'd definitely get him back in. Now you got five guards on the court, which is extremely hard to guard with only eight seconds. But we've seen Tolbert go coast to coast on many games this year with only eight seconds to go. So do you see drive, finish on your own, or kick it out because you have Woods out on the corner? It looks They're going to drive a high ball screen here and drive right at Woods. And they're not going to help. Krim on the dribble. To the rack he goes. The runner is gone. And that's the way this first period ends. 9-8 to eight on the runner by Krim. And we go to the second. It's a one-point Fairfield lead here on Chatterbox Plus. We're through one period. It's a Fairfield lead with... Nine to eight here through eight minutes. Along with Sean Van Winkle, I'm Jeff Kim. We're produced tonight by Reed Mouse and by Josh Newren. Our videographer is Ian Kallemeyer. And the most important member of our staff tonight, Mia Van Winkle, our statistician. She is, and she ran down. Here's some key stats, Jeff, in the first quarter. One for eight from three for Fairfield. The other key stat, we just talked about it, the Duke of has only shot the ball two times. That's it. Two times. Kid average of 28 a game. They got to get him some touches. Fairfield has the ball out of the quarter break. Woods thought about the shot. He's going to Wright State. He's shooting 45% from behind the three-point line this year. Jackson takes it away from him. Here comes West. 
Down by one. They changed, they got, they changed who's guarding uh, Dudukovic now. They're gonna try to wear him down with a couple different people. As Corner three, through. knock it down. Dudukovic strikes again. Jackson with a great screen for the Firebirds in order for Dudukovic to get a shot. And we've got a Lakota West lead once more, our second lead change. 11 and nine. They love this two-man game right here. Woods from the corner, too long. Back iron, but Amir Rogers resets it. One more. Oh, too late. Coney oh. Watt. Guilty of the Texas two-step. Yes. Swanson, I'm sorry, Bronston missed that one more pass to Coney in the corner. I want to get back to your point about Dudukovic getting looks and touches and shots. It's one thing not to get shots early on in a ball game. It's a whole other thing where your best player, you're the best scoring threat, maybe of all, all of Southwest Ohio, isn't getting touches. He isn't. But they'll get him, they'll get it going here. They're going to run maybe some staggered doubles and but the five out here is really hard for him to to get a shot. And the shots he's made are, have been contested. Jay Jackson, nice patience, but. Amir Rogers in his way, and here comes Fairfield. Woods dumps it off. Beauty! Missed the jam. And they're trying to reset, and we head the other way. Bronson Ray Coney yeah. was out of bounds Number out two. on the baseline, then we go the other way. Laying down out of bounds, yep. Going back to Dudukovic, Jeff, which we talk about him a lot tonight, but the two shots he, he made, they were almost contested shots. Right. I mean, he's making some very, very difficult shots for the Firebirds. Averaging 28 points a ball game. He's shooting 54% from the floor this year. And that's in total. He pops from 15. Too long off the back. Amir Rogers got a touch of it, and so did William Layfield, and will stay up front. Oh, we got a foul. I think we're already in the one on one. Amir Rogers is going to step up, shoot some free throws for the Indians. So Derek Jackson picks up the personal. As you mentioned, it's one of the bonus the rest of the half with 6.04 left to go till halftime. And Amir only shoots 33% from the foul line here. So, Well, we had talked prior to this ball game about the propensity of the two teams shooting free throws. No good on one of the bonus. Recovered, and we've got a charge. Like, it, it's, it's a charge signal, but it was a hook. Yeah, he hooked him. So Coney picks up his first, and that's just two team fouls against Fairfield, so they got plenty to give. Plenty to give. Playing pretty solid defense. Wanted to mention about the propensity of the teams getting to the free throw line. Fairfield had got coming into this ball game, got to the line 180 times. West 262. West leads the GMC in free throw, free, free, uh, free throw attempts and makes. Coney out to Bronson, out in the left pocket. Coney puts it on the deck. Nice move around to Dukovic and scores. Good take. Might have got fouled there, but Coney. Coney is really a, a really solid, quiet player. Really good at attacking the basket, using his body. Went off two feet. Jackson mishandles, saved by his teammate in Lavender. Outside, it's Layfield for three, he knocks it down. His second trifecta tonight, 14-11, Lakota West. Bucket attempt on the other end, no good. And we're gonna head the other way. That's two on Rogers. I see Swanson come back in here. No. They're going to go small. Again, they have five guards out there right now. Fairfield does. Well, and they can do that because that's the type of team. They're, they're, they've got enough athleticism and great shooting ability from the outside that you can go small in the five. Absolutely. 15. Ty Cunningham just came in, junior for the Fairfield Indians. This is his first action of the evening. Five minutes till halftime, 14-11, Lakota West. Woods is back on to Dukovic. Jackson plays back to the side pocket. Isaiah Tyson gets a touch. 
There's a drive to the rack. No good for Layfield. Everything but the bucket. Here's Grimm, nice step through, into the lane and a score. Good change of pace, change speed, good change of direction. The Krim Reaper has four in the book and it's a one point affair here at the arena. Tyson off the high screen by Lavender. Jackson gets it now. I almost feel like the Dukovic is a decoy right now. <laughs> They're not running a whole lot for him. Nathan finally gets the ball off the high lavender screen. Now to Jackson. He sets the high pick. It's Layfield pumping three. Was that partially blocked? It's saved by Tolbert. Fairfield looking to take the lead. Here's Krim into the lane. Once more, the runner too long. And now we got basket interference. He, she may call foul. Yeah, she called a foul on him. He grabbed the net and a foul, so basket interference plus a foul. So Tolbert picks up the personal. We head the other way. West with the ball in the lead. I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't expect Derek Jackson to get as much touches as he has tonight. Yeah, and they're running his five out. Here's Tyson, the jumper, no good. Tolbert, oh, look at that. That's a beauty move. Outside, three from the corner. <laughs> Ty Cunningham logs on for the first time tonight. And we got a timeout. Did a great job driving, kicking. Cunningham had his feet set, hands ready. What a great pass. Nice to see Cunningham coming in as a junior, getting some action for the Indians. He does shoot 55% from three, Cunningham, but he, he's only he's only taken 10 total now. Now up to 60% from long range, and he gives his team a two-point lead. The lead changes once more. That's our third lead change. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. You feel, doesn't it feel like the Fairfield's getting ready to just explode on offense? But I tell you what, to to, to a great coaching uh, move here by Coach Leon, they are really being patient on offense. I have I've yet to see Lakota West the last last couple of years do what they're doing right now, but they are doing a very good job of moving the ball, getting reversals, spreading out five out, using some ball screen action, some straight cut action, but I've been really impressed with Coach Leon really trying to keep this as a very low possession game. Right, well, I, I, it comes down to opportunities, right? Yep. Uh, if you, it, you and I talked about this in our pregame chat. Fairfield with 50 shot attempts per ball game, west of 45. Yeah, they're going to try to limit that the Firebirds are limited at that tonight as they're spreading out. And that's probably the first thing Coach Leon said in that timeout. Let's take our time on offense as Jackson shoots an uncharacteristic three. And it's off the mark and the rebound to Krim. Here's Tolbert down to the corner. Cunningham disdains three and will reset. And they run five out. Krim looks inside, nothing, gets the high screen from Woods. Tobert, top of the key. Miss handles. Lucky to get it back. Still has it. Yeah, Tobert's over dribbled a few times, which is. Coney is stuck on a triple team. Outside. Woods, top of the key! That's the cleanest look Woods has had in a long, long time as he knocks down that one more extra pass. When you have five guards out there, that's what makes it extremely difficult is to cover all five of those kids for the Indians. What a great extra pass there. Woods knocks it down. He has given Fairfield their biggest lead with two minutes left to go till halftime. A five-point margin at 19 to 14. Lavender out of the dead ball. Dedukovic way downtown. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, that was about 24 feet out. Nice little side out of bounds play with a dribble handoff and Dedukovic. His guy went under the screen, which is a little surprising. Usually Woods will go over top with him. He went under, got caught under at 24 feet. 
Little isolation play for Woods here. Three for Bronson to answer back. See how Woods got rid of that ball quick, not over dribbling. He took two drip pass. See, I think I think Tolbert's over dribbling a little bit tonight. Woods there with a great pass. Excellent pass for the Indians. Back to a five-point ball game. Now he's true. Now Woods is trailing him on that last that down screen. Little push. As Wayfield was making his move, Owen Bronston picks up the personal. Yeah, Coach Weirich's talking to Woods right now, telling him to stay with him, get on his hip, run with him. But look at the shots he's made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> difficult, difficult shots. Do you, do you by any chance watch gymnastics or figure skating? I don't. So there is a degree of difficulty in both sports. It's not just the execution of a maneuver or a play. It's... The, how how difficult it is and how easy you make it look. That's been Dudukovic tonight. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's an excellent point. 24 feet out, handoff, catch, shoot, and he looked like it was so easy, but that is a very, very hard shot. I'm going to give him high praise in a second as he has the ball. The high praise is that had a J.J. Redick feel on that last it shot. Did. But, Jeff, I hate Duke. So and my daughter just heard you. She's 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 giving you the thumbs down because you use the Duke Rebels. I like Ty Ty Washington. There reference. you go. As another. Oh, one. here's the fadeaway from 15. No good for Dudukovic. So all of his makes tonight have been from behind the three point line. He wants one shot. He wants one shot. They'll go to a two man game where it's a drive and kick here. A two man game where it's a drive and kick. They'll bury these guys down in the corners. Again, Woods, they're going to do a little two-man game. They're going to bury some people. Here's Krim with five to play. To the rack, he goes too strong. The rebound to Lavender, and he gives it up before Dudukovic can take a shot. We come to the end of this first half. A really fun first 16 minutes of this ball game. A five-point margin for Fairfield as we go to the halftime break. When we return, we'll break down the first half and look ahead to half number two when we return on Chatterbox Plus. We're at the half and at halftime it is 22-17 Fairfield with a five-point lead along with the coach Sean Van Winkle. I'm Jeff Kim. Fairfield has been impressive. They came on in the second quarter partner and it's shown on the scoreboard. It has and looking at the keys of the game Jeff for the Fairfield Indians. They wanted to defend without fouling. Guess how many free throw attempts Lakota West has had? Zero. Wow. So they are defending without fouling. Coach Wyatt has got to be happy about that. The other thing they wanted to attack the driving lanes, he said against the zone, but they've been able to attack it against Lakota West man to man defense. Fairfield's been able to get into the teeth of the defense, especially the paint. And on the other side, Lakota West, they wanted to out rebound Fairfield. They're not out rebounding, but it's not bad. 11 to 16. The other thing that they wanted to do, and you and I have been impressed with it, is they wanted to slow pace down and be patient on offense. And Jeff, the Firebirds have slowed it down. It yes, shocked me. It shocked me, but they have slowed it down. But hats off to Coach Leon for trying to stay in this game. With, with the uh, patience of his offense. You know, I want to accentuate one of your points. Leading scorer in this ball game is Nathan Dudukovic with nine points. He had zero points in the paint. He, he did, and, and again, I think he had 17 points because we're going to give him that degree of difficulty you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, he's shooting really hard shots and making them. Guys in his face, but that's what a great score does at 28 a game. But uh, I would look for them to try to get him some easier looks. When we watched them against East, they posted him up a little bit, if you remember. Yep. Now, that may be a little tougher against Fairfield because the type of guard Fairfield has. But look for them, again, for West to stay patient. But if the Firebirds hit, I mean, they were four. I mean, I'm sorry, the Indians hit. They were 4-13 from three. And they had a lot of good looks. But they didn't shoot a great percentage. So both teams get it back out on the floor. Fairfield is the 10th ranked team in the state, if you believe the Associated Press Bowl in Division I. The leading team in the state is Centerville, last year's state champion. Elder is ranked fifth as we're back underway. 
And Dakota I think that'll West, change. I think that'll change a lot. Yeah, after the Turpin yeah. loss. Yeah, after the Turpin loss. And I even think the rest of the guys are running something for the Dukovic there right off to start to get to start the third quarter there. We saw a double screen yeah. right at the free throw yeah. line, but the Dukovic wasn't handling. Yeah. A little elevator screen. America's play, they call that. <laughs> Everybody in the country runs that play. <laughs> Here's Lavender, top of the key, as West attacks the north bucket. Here at the arena in Fairfield, down by five. And again, Woods starts off on the Dukovic. Remember, they had a bunch of guys they were throwing at him. Bryson Curry, inside the Dukovic to the rack, and he found Rogers in his way. Here comes Fairfield with the ball. Spin move, Krim, left of the lane, back outside. Three on the way, too long. Too long for Ray Coney. Four of 14 now from three. Three straight on is no good for William Layfield, who had a couple from long range in the first half. Settle in here. Drive Woods to the rim. Left hand shot, no good. Ball's out of bounds. I believe we'll stay up yeah. front with 640 Amir, to go. Amir Rogers looked as if he tipped it out, but they did not call that against him. It'll again, be Krim to trigger, beg your pardon. Again, their baseline set here. They run that four low and then run some actions off of it. Rogers will set the high screen. See if he moves down towards the bucket. Here's their, here's their little isolation play. Krim straight on for three. Too long, got glass and nothing else. That's usually a driving kick situation. Here's a three for Lavender, too short this time. Indians four for 15 from the three here in this game. Tapped out, we'll head the other way. Both teams a little cold here in the opening minutes of the second yeah. half. I love that hustle by Layfield though. Back tap, they call that, or flick. I call it a back tap and then he saved it right off of Coney. We have mentioned that Dudurich is the leading scorer in this ballgame with nine points. On the other side, Owen Bronston has six points off the bench. Comes off the bench. We talked about him earlier in the week, you and I. What a guy to come off the bench, right? Yes. Here's the Dukovic, the runner, and he still can't score in the paint. Yeah, great, great it's defense. my assertion that he's the best sixth man in the league. He is, and we talked, and I told you one of the other reasons, not, not only because of his, of his stats, but his ability to play so many different positions and guard different positions. Fairfield this one is thrown out to nobody, intended for Tolbert, we had the other way. Fairfield appeals, they're very stagnant on offense right now. They're not getting too many ball reversals, a lot of over dribbling. And Coach Leon's probably telling the Duke, shoot the ball when you get it. By the way, <laughs> by the way, if Jim Leon was any further out on the court, he'd have to check in. <laughs> Coach Leon got the jumpsuit on, so he'll be ready. <laughs> Lavender from the top. Bryson Curry is the team leader in assists with three and a half a ball game. He's fourth in the conference, by the way, with that figure. Yeah, transferred in from the Cleveland area. And he's been a real boost to this West team. Yeah. His assist to turnover ratio is really good. Dudukovic, side pocket left, returns it back. Yeah, his assist to turnover is 1.2, Jeff. That's really good. With Curry, and that, that's very solid. Anytime you're over over one, that's good if you're the primary point guard. Oh, beauty runner on the curl. Christopher Barber for two. Barber, the second time he's attacked the rim there. He's got four in the book, and he cuts it to a three-point ball game at 22-19. A little two-man game. Woods off to Tolbert, right of the lane, stuck on a double team. Here's a shot put up, Coney can't get it to drop. They keep it up front, nice save by Tolbert. Tolbert across the lane, passes it to nobody, we have the other way. Yeah, he's struggling a little bit tonight. Over dribbling, tough pass there, good steal. We had mentioned turnovers at the halftime break. Four turnovers at the intermission for visiting West and five for the home team Fairfield, but they both teams have been a little out of sorts in the passing game, even if it hasn't shown up in turnovers. It is, and I mean, both teams are very well scouted, so you know what the other team's running. You're so deep into the season now. Barber stuck on a double team. They repost Barber. 
Low left, outside. Nadugovic will handle. Nadugovic on the move, he still can't penetrate. Again, we had mentioned how good he's been in the paint. Three ball, no good for Layfield. Not a very good shot for Firebirds. Tolbert stuck low right. Oh, nice feed inside to Grimm on the post entry. Grimm has six. That's a great pass by Tolbert. Woods with no help. Zero, it's called zero defense, which means you have no help. <laughs> Curry up high. Great Goes cut. to a fashing Lavender to the rim and one! Yeah, Amir Rogers trailing him there on his hip. He got to jump to help and meet him there. He cut his face. Amir Rogers with the foul, and I believe that's three on him. Yeah, he's coming out of the game as we're bringing in the sixth the man of the year, Owen Bronston. He came hey, hey, in for Amir Rogers. Yes. Okay, if Woods was in foul trouble, he'd come in for Woods. Mm -hmm. Tolbert in foul trouble, he can come in for Tolbert. That's what makes him so special for the Indians. To accentuate, and no good on the back end for Lavender. Owen is a high leaper. He can get to the rim and finish at the hoop. And he can shoot well from behind the arc, and we've got a foul. Three, nice Williams drive by Woods there, getting into the paint. That's two the on Layfield on the hold. Puts a lot of pressure on the defense doing that. Lakota West got into foul trouble early in the second quarter a bit ago. They have held things in check. Only one foul here so far in this quarter. And we stay up front. Good defense. So to fi finish up a point on Bronston. To anybody who's watching us, if it sounds like we are fans of his, we are. Yeah, absolutely. Love the way he plays. Three for Tolbert! Three. Number three, Tolbert. I think he's five of 16 now. 27 to 21. Tolbert, his first three of the night, he's got five in the book. This is scary part of the game for the Firebirds. They got to be patient here. And run the clock. Still, you're only down six, but they got to get a really good look. Something to be said about Fairfield is, or actually about Lakota West, they have withheld or withstood what is a potent Fairfield offense in the first half. They outscored their opposition in the first 16 minutes of every, of every ball game by 12. Absolutely. And that's a great stat as they get the offensive rebound and miss. Three on two, pass it back, there it is. The give back and a foul. Good three on two. Prim was making his move, William Layfield picks up the personal. Foul number three, William Layfield. So Layfield picks up his third, Do you sit him with 150 to go in the quarter. Um, I probably would claim. It looks like coach is getting him out, but you're at a really tough spot right now. You're down six, and it's getting ready to get away from you. And you, I mean, you're just gonna have to roll the dice. I mean, West is six and five, three and four in the league. Fairfield waiting at the score table. The two sum of Ty Cunningham and Michael Swanson. First one, no Number good for Grimm, who is a 71 and a half percent shooter at the stripe this year. Fairfield as a team shoots right around 67 percent, and if there's one. I don't want to say deficiency, but if there's one deficiency in their overall team game, it is free throw shooting. Yeah, you, I mean, their their best players are mid to high Cunningham 70s, Cunningham which is good. Is good. Number 15, Ty Cunningham. As Cunningham comes India. back in, remember Cunningham hit that big three in the quarter pocket. Oh, and First that was half. a momentum three it in was. the second. It was a big three. We haven't had a lot of momentum plays tonight. I think the closest thing I can think of it is the Dudukovic 25-footer that we saw back in the second. Tough shot. Lavender left of the lane. Fires one off, off the short corner, no good. Cunningham plays Tolbert. See Woods wants to post up here. Back outside, three for Bronston too long. They retain possession up front with 1.14 to play here in the third. 
Swanson got a touch. Tolbert back to Swanson. He draws a double outside. Three for Cunningham! Knock it down! Talking about a guy that knows he's rolled. Swanson had the ball three times inside the paint and kicked it out to the cards. And talk about a player that knows his role. And it's our first double digit lead on the ball game at 31 21. Swanson, good minutes for the Indians in the first half and now. And again, Amir Rogers gets in foul trouble, so you need that guy coming off the bench as Dudukovic has Woods all over him here. Dudukovic 15 feet away. That's an amazing, I mean, that, that's that three level scoring that we talked about. How do you guard that any better than what Woods just did? The Duke has 11, 31 to 23, and we'll see if Fairfield plays for a final shot with uh, 20 seconds left to play here in this third. Cunningham may get a three here. They like to drive and kick right corner pocket. So Cunningham may get a three right here as we get a high ball screen. Look for him to get one, nope. Tolbert, the runner, and a foul. Foul is on Barber. That's number three on Chris. Number 12, Jared Jackson. Neither team in foul trouble. That's the third team foul for West, just one on the board for Fairfield. The throw in will come from Logan Woods. Woods gets, pops, free throw line, 15 footer, too long, off the mark, and the rebound to Lavender. Here's a throw up after the buzzer. Bryson Curry misfires and we head to the fourth. It's a lead for Fairfield as we go to the decisive fourth quarter, 31-23 here on Chatterbox Plus. Where do we go here in Fairfield at the arena? 31-23, the Indians leading the Firebirds. Along with the coach, Sean Van Winkle, I'm Jeff Kim. Our producers tonight, Reed Mouse and Josh Nuren. Our videographer is Ian Callemeyer. And our most important part, our statistician tonight, Mia Van Winkle. One of the things that you and I noted coming into this ball game was point differential. Lakota West is plus in the first three quarters. They are minus, minus 27 points, or about two and a half points a ball game in the fourth. Yeah, I, I mean, those are key stats. I mean, a lot of it can be what kind of bench do you have, the guys coming off the bench. Because we had talked about teams sometimes just kind of just losing, losing it in the fourth quarter. A lot of that, they just don't have a ton of players. Well, that's not a problem for Fairfield, obviously. As they missed the switch there. Lavender on the catch, three on the way! All started with the miss, miss switch on defense there. Usually Fairfield hard hedge and recover. Cunningham kind of got in a bad spot as in the drive and kick here. There comes Lakota West, Tolbert for three, misfires everything. Initially saved and Tolbert recovers. Three off the catch, knock it down! Ty Cunningham, what a great pass to by Owen Bronston. Seeing Cunningham wide open there, solid pass. And that breaks up the five nothing run. And we got a blocking call down low on the other end. Yeah, we tried to get a charge there. Uh, Why here, we got this extra pass out. One more, boom, Cunningham, nice three. What a great, that's like a touch pass like we were talking about early in the game. Well, Cunningham with nine off the bench, and we had just mentioned about the need of a good bench, especially in that fourth quarter, oh. and right now, that's coming up. Yeah, Swanson. Cunningham, great minutes right now for the Fairfield Indians. And then Mr. Everything, Bronson, he's always given to you. But it's nice seeing him get deep into this bench. Jeff, you, the one thing I had question about, about the Indians, just for a second here, is can they win in a low scoring, grinded out game? And this is testing them. Who, who wins every year in our region? Centerville, Moeller. They're scoring in the 40s or 50s to get to the state final four and the Indians are learning to win in these grinded out games. It's Bronson left of the lane, he misfires, and we have the other way. Yeah, he so, missed uh, Krim in the corner there, coach is telling him. Wanted to follow up on a point, we did, we did see free throws one of two the last time down for Derek Jackson, as Lakota West is trying to make their move, and when you can hit threes, especially 
Uh, the Dukovic is the known threat, but if you get somebody off your bench, and in this case it might be young Mr. Cunningham, uh, that might make a difference here in the deciding eight. Good defense there by the Indians. Drive, no good, and a foul as Bryson Curry took it to the rack with the right hand layup. He can't get it to drop, and he'll go to the line. Yeah, what a drive here. You look at the baseline drive as he cuts, passes. You try to get your guys crimp. You try to teach your guys to rotate outside the lane, take a charge. Krim didn't get there. He rotated late, and then he fouled him by trying to block the shot. First free throw for Bryson Curry is no good. He is a 46.5% shooter at the stripe this year. Foul is on Deshaun Krim. That's his first. Team fouls are even at three in the late minutes. Yeah, Jeff, you called that 46 and a half. Now that scares me when you got your point guard shooting in the 50s. That's the one thing, or 40s, I'm sorry. That's the one thing as a point guard, Mr. Curry, he's gonna have to get that shooting percentage up from the foul line, because he's gonna have the ball in his hand a lot at the end of the game, as we got a six point game here. Low scoring game, right where Coach Leon wanted this game. To be honest, as they get into Buffalo, they call this, which is their ball screen continuity. He'll swing it and get right into a ball screen here. Steal. It's Layfield to the rack. That almost called timeout of Coach Wyrick. He might, I mean, he's letting these guys kind of play through this. He's bringing in some subs. Here's Tolbert, stuck mid post. Beg your pardon, Krim. And in this ball screen continuity. Cunningham back up on top, one straight on! Cunningham with the dime, what a great pass. Looks with his feet set. Wood just had a couple clean looks, which he's not used to getting, being a premier shooter that he is. Back to a Indians. seven point ball game with five to play. Logan Woods has seven in the book. Did I say seven, he has eight in the book. 37 to 30. They're in their little flex screen, down screen actions. It's the Duke up top. Check by Woods. Travel. Yep. Travel. The Texas two-step. <laughs> the Texas two-step with one more in it. Yep, he, uh, he shuffled his feet. You know, while we have a moment, when you were coaching, did you have euphemisms for traveling? I, the, the Texas two-step is one I haven't used in a few years. I kind of thought I'd unearth it tonight, but uh, uh, the cha-cha also came right to mind, right, too. Right, right, yeah. I, I usually get, I, I, I can't say what I used to say when, <laughs> when, guys, when guys would travel in the open court like that. That's a very, uh, that's a tough one to swallow as a coach as Wood slips the screen. Woods from the corner, too short this time. He gets it back, skips it outside. It's Coney left of the lane. Mid post, stuck on a double team. Doesn't it feel like they're over dribbling a lot it, They are. I mean, a lot of over dribbling. Krim from long range, too long. The rebound to Lavender, down by seven. They need a momentum three here, West does. I mean, this is right where, this is, this is where Coach Leon wants this game. They just gotta come away with some, with some points here as they're getting into their little ball screen action now. Here's a move, Layfield. Boom, charge. Nope, that's no, an it's one. a foul, it's an and one. So you get three, or at least the old fashioned three at point attempt coming up. He slid, he, he kind of slid into it. This is great ball control as he steps through, makes him kind of just turn a little bit. Tober had to lean a little bit to his right. And that was, I mean, a really, really good take. So that's two on Tolbert. Here's the old fashioned three Layfield. from Layfield. He's had a very nice night. 14 in the book. Layfield has definitely had a great game as their team's leading scorer tonight, by the way. Drive Krim, no good, foul. Yeah, did you, that's a great play that Coach Wyrick runs. He buries a shooter in a corner that no one's gonna help off of. So you run that slice cut, Iverson cut, whatever you wanna call, rip and drive, and you got the advantage, you're going downhill. You got guys like Krim and Tolbert going downhill. 
That's a really good, it's just, it's just a two-man game. Nothing fancy. Brim has seven in the book. He misfires on the front end. And William Layfield, by the way, now has four personals. Do you sit him now? No. Let him play it out. You have to. I mean, you're you're down four against the best team in Cincinnati. You gotta you gotta let him play. You gotta let him play. One of two for Krim. He's got eight. 38-33. Well, it's been a real close one. We saw the lead expand to 10 at the end of the third quarter for Fairfield, but West has stayed in it. They're posted up to Dukovic now, which you and I seen when they played East. He's got that in his game now. That weight room's allowed him to do that. Uh, you and I have a firm view of his deltoids and his triceps. They are big. He's, he's definitely, his body looks different than it did last year. He's a year older. And you, why in the world has Miami of Ohio and some of these schools not offered him yet? Uh, that's, a, that's a $64 question. That's more than that. Here's Barber up top. We're checked by Tolbert. Left in the lane and charged. Tolbert, <laughs> what a great defensive play by Tolbert. Got ahead of him. Now, Barber's done a good job tonight of attacking the basket, but Tolbert did an excellent job there getting his body in front of him. That's four on Barber. And you hate to pick up fouls that way. Now they're way. gonna try to press here. A little one, two, two. Look for skips here, skip opposite. Grim out to Woods, corner three, two on. Amir, Amir Rogers, a big rebound. Out to Coney, free throw line, they'll reset. But what did Fairfield do when they did that press? We got a hold down shot low. It quick. Fairfield shot it quick. They just didn't rebound. The Firebirds didn't rebound. I mean, Coach Leon's rolling all the dice tonight. Really doing an excellent job coaching this game, managing this game. And I call it managing because, I mean, he's got this thing low scoring. Fouls on Curry as Rogers sets the high pick and a beauty move to the hoop for Woods. Good screen by Amir Rogers. Now, that's not over dribbling when you're going downhill like that. Speaking of going downhill, and one! Layfield will go back to the line for the old-fashioned three. Got that on Coney. Battles on number zero, Ray Coney. He does a great job here. Layfield's had a great game, and he's attacking it. That little hesitation at the foul line, he kind of held it for a second, and then attacked and used one dribble to get it to the backboard, and that was a great play. Layfield's had an unbelievable game for the Firebirds tonight. Very crafty player. He's doing it by attacking the rim is what I love as he steps up, like you said, old fashioned three pointer there. Timeout. Coach Leon is really. Timeout, charge to Lakota West with 2.05 left to go. Here in this decisive fourth, back to a two possession ball game at 40 to 36. So as soon as Fairfield had expanded the lead to 10 at the end of the third, it was a five nothing run by Lakota West to answer back. And then they've held in check. It's now back to a four point ball game. They're just a momentum three away from really putting something, <laughs> some thunder into this. They, they are, and right now, again, I said managing the game. Coach Leon is managing this game he's keeping to be quite honest a team that probably shouldn't be this close they're they're there in the game a lot of it's his coaching strategy patience on offense patience on offense defensively really doing a great job look for them to maybe run that press again a little one two two press now they're going full court man to man now full court man to man to reset Fairfield has a four point lead at 40 to 36. Team fouls, just one apart. Five for Fairfield, six for Lakota West. The next one will be one of the bonus for Fairfield. And Fairfield went small here, Jeff. They're all guards and they're gonna delay this game if they don't get a five second call. Ooh, he didn't have Time control. Out. He did not have control. Wow. So <laughs> DJ Wyrick got the benefit of the doubt. A timeout to Fairfield with 150 to go. I'm with you. That was a dicey timeout call. Coming up for both teams on the schedule. First for Fairfield. They'll be back in action on Sunday at flying to the hoop. They'll take on St. Vincent St. Yes. Mary. 
And the next time out will be tomorrow for the Dakota West. They'll be at home against Oray. Yeah. St. Vincent, St. Mary, Division II number one team yep. in the state. And that's a great game for Fairfield. As we talked uh, earlier about the top 10 rankings, that would get Fairfield some momentum. They go up there and knock out the number one team in Division II in the state. A point on St. Vincent, St. Mary as we get out of the timeout is obviously they have a very famous alumni from the basketball program but to that point right how good is St. Vincent St. Mary you and I don't I don't well I don't know if you know I don't know where Michael Jordan went to high school I have no idea <laughs> but I know where LeBron James did and I don't know if that's a state of Ohio thing but they're awfully good here's Coney to the rack and he's denied there what a good here comes West on a two on one to the rack play few with the deuce three. And another timeout. A oh, two-point ball game with 1.24 to go. This looks like it's a full timeout. But what a great play here by West. Looking ahead, got a three on one and finished at the rim. And Coach Leon does one of those Coach Higgins timeouts. Sure. Timeout on a made basket, but he's doing it to set his defense up. I talked about Fairfield's team right now. They got five guards out there that are making it difficult for Dakota West to defend. But Jeff, they're defending them well. Dakota West is defending the, the Indians with five guards really, really well tonight. And that's hard to do. If you and I had a nickel to bet coming into this ball game on who the, the leading scorer of this contest would be, you and I would have lost the nickel. Yeah. Because tonight it's William Wayfield with 19 points. Yeah, and he's had a great game. He's playing great defense too. I mean, he's, he's, he's got a couple steals. Got a big steal there just a few minutes ago. A very a timely steal. But he's had a great game for the Firebirds. I've been impressed. I've been impressed with Coach Leon's philosophy tonight, his game plan. The guys went through hell this week, to be perfectly honest with you. And it's a tragic, tragic thing in his life. And here he is, coaching his tail off against the number one team in the GMC. Bramwell fired from his own back line against full court pressure. And another timeout to Fairfield yeah. with 124 to go. So I call these timeouts. Timeout. These are rec league timeouts. So right now, the last two timeouts that Coach Weirich had to call, Jeff, was to prevent turnovers. Those, I call it rec league, third grade league. Every timeout, I get five of them tomorrow in Mia's game in fourth grade. And I'll use all five, probably not to turn the ball over. Mm. So what he's done tonight, he's coaching, he's coaching hard. Coach Weirich used these last two timeouts to prevent turnovers. Oh, by the way, they're only up two points. So these are great timeouts, but man, oh man, are the Indians in a barn burner tonight against the Firebirds, who are three and four in the GMC right now. Lakota West here in this fourth quarter has outscored Fairfield 17 to seven. Now this is a team that we mentioned in West that have been outscored in the fourth. Yes. So this is a this turnabout is, a is fair play. Yeah, it, it is. This is totally different than what the Firebirds are used to. Now who do you foul? That so, guy, Amir Rogers. Yeah. Oh, that's that way. Take it away. That's that way. Boom. That's the right call. That's the right. Dukovic. Dukovic with not not a three, folks. This is a defensive play by Dukovic coming up huge for the Firebirds. It's Barber to throw in. Side out of bounds in front of us. 117 to play and a fun one here at the arena. They're running their five out. They're taking their time. Barber between the rings. Gets a high screen and sets one up now for Layfield. To the rack, he goes no good. The rebound to Tobin. And now it's taken away from him. Lavender, outside. Dugovic for the lead. No good. He missed everything. They stay up front. Curry down low. It's Barber, low right foul. With 51.9 to go here in the fourth. Barber shoots 70%. What a great play as the Indians drive past Barber with the head fake, head fake, gets three people in the air, gets fouled, steps up, 
to the foul line. Jeff with 50 seconds to go to tie the ball game for the Firebirds. Barber at the stripe, 23 of 33, just under 70%. Lefty lets fly, no good, too long. He's never shot free throws like this. <laughs> These are pressure cookers here as the Indians go back to their five guard lineup, keep the things spread out. And again, this lineup, Jeff, we talked earlier about who to foul for the Indians. It's hard to foul any of these guys. You know, he took Rodgers out of the game. No good! The rebound to Krim! West ball. Oh, actually, we have a jump ball. Do we have a jump ball? Lakota West ball. So Lakota West retains. Tony was tied up down low with 50.2 left to go as Amir Rogers checks back into this ball game. Free throw rebounds drive you bonkers. And Lavender with a great free throw rebound as we're in now to a full timeout. Timeouts, uh, timeout on the floor with 50.2 left to go. Fouls are even at six. So the next one is one of the bonus for somebody. And you have a two point contest here at the arena. What was once momentum for Fairfield has completely disappeared. I don't know where it went, Coach. You have to say it's the Lakota West defense. It is, and right now, if you're the Indians, you're looking at your scouting report, and you're trying to figure out, you got Coach Davis, Coach Roberts, Coach Bradbury, Coach Woods, Coach Edwards. They're, they're scouting West like crazy, so they're going over right now. What out-of-bounds player are they going to run? Lakota West. On the flip side here, if you're the uh, if you're the Firebirds, maybe you, you have the Dukovic take it out, step back in and post up. I'd like to see him post up. So right now it's a chess match. It's assistant coaches earning that pay right now because they're trying to tell the guys what's going to happen. As the Firebirds has the Dukovic, looks like he's taking it out. Look for him to step in. Look for him to step in, like I just said. For the Indians, looks like the Duke is going to take the ball out, Jeff. He'll trigger from the baseline. He may step in and post up. Which would make sense. Yep. And he has been fantastic inside the three-point line this year at 67%. To your point, it's going to be a one-on-one -on, -one on the next foul. He lobs it in, and it's taken away by Krim. Up ahead of the pack, to the rack he goes, and in! A big deuce for the Krim Reaper. Great defensive play. The Dukovic, top of the key. Layfield penetrates. The runner. And good again. Boy, he's been running tonight. Do we have another timeout? We do with 28.8 to go. 42 to 40. How big was that deuce by It was Grimm? huge. It was huge. And again, control and finished at the end. I was a little surprised how stagnant Lakota West was on her out of bounds play. No movement. It almost looked like they were trying to post him up at the top of the key there. And the Dukovic with the, that's the Dukovic's turnover underneath um, on that out of bounds play. There'll be more action on this play here, I guarantee it. 42 to 40. Well, for the second straight week, you and I finally have a good one after a litany of blowouts. Yeah, we do. Who are they going to foul? Who are they going to foul? You got all five guards in for the Indians. All of them that are in right now. Coney is probably the worst free throw shooter. So if you're trying to foul, you probably try to foul Coney if you're the Firebirds. Bronston's only 50%. Those are the two guys. If you're Coach Leon, you're telling them right now, those are the two guys we want to foul. Coney at 56%. Yep. Austin, you mentioned at 50. Grim at uh, 71 and a half. Colin Tolbert, really good at 79 and a half. And Woods is and Woods at seven, uh, just under 73. You got you gotta, you gotta to foul. You got to foul Bronston. You got to foul Coney. And you got to do it real quick. Do it real quick. But they're not. Woods will trigger oh. the home run pass down. I do not and like that. It. I do not like that play. And West can play for a tie or a win and a foul out on the side as Krim picks up the personal as he worked in on Layfield. Coach Weirich can't be happy. I'm not sure that's the option they wanted. You have a 50-50 ball down the floor. That's a 
I'm Get not up. sure that's the option they wanted. Number three, William Layfield. We're going to line to shoot one and one. So Layfield's been the story of the game. Front end is good. Now they're bringing Amir in, so if they miss this, they're going to foul Rodgers quick. But the way Layfield's playing right now, Jeff, I'd be surprised if he misses here. 21.7 on the clock, and a big free throw for Layfield, and we are tied! Now you just play half-court solid defense, West. Just play half-court defense. Right now, do not timeout. If I'm West, then it's a full timeout. 21.7 to go. Tied at 42, our third tie of the ball game. What was once a 10-point lead for Fairfield has completely evaporated. Yeah, Jeff, what I do not like, and maybe Coach Leon will change it, they were getting ready to press man-to-man Fairfield full court with 21 seconds to go. The problem with that, in my opinion, is if Fairfield gets the ball with their guard's ability, they're going downhill right now. I would back up a little bit and just play half-court defense and just be as solid as you can. You've held them to 42, man. You've held them to 42, so get half-court, get solid on defense. If they press right now, look for Fairfield to run in action and go downhill right away and attack the rim quick. Fairfield is averaging 68 points a ball game. They are minus 26 below their average tonight. This has been a great uh, game plan by Coach Leon. You could ask, does Fairfield take the last shot? Maybe. You're telling Fairfield, take the best first shot we got. It looks like it looks like Dakota West is gonna play full court man right now. I'm not sure I like this at all. But you gotta get the no ball foul. in. Yeah, no fouls to give. Woods the trigger. He goes to Krim, draws the double on the back line, back to Woods. 15 on the play side. clock. Now they're playing solid D here. It's a two-man game like always. 10 on the play clock. High screen, set for Tolbert. Penetrates. He and walked. He traveled. He walked. With 5.5 left to go, and the Coto West can pull off an upset here tonight here in Fairfield. Yeah, he walked great defense. It was help side defense here as we're getting ready to come into play. Barber to Layfield. Here we go. Down the sideline. And some contact out on the sideline. He throws it up. No good. We go to overtime. Boy, they threw that thing in quick. I thought we had contact down on the sideline. No call. We played on. And we go to extra minutes for the second straight week. <laughs> you and I, our Fridays have been blessed, my friend. We've had two great Fridays. And oh, my. Oh, my. Well, we'll hold things right here yeah. as we have the overtime possession. Tied up at 42, and Lakota West has come all the way back. All the way back. And again, they're doing it with two different things. They're doing it with patience on offense and solid, solid defense. Rock solid. We talked about it as that play came out. I said, get back in half court and play defense like you played the whole game. And they did. They rotated over help. It was a two-man game. They rotated over help, forced Tolbert to shuffle his feet, and he turned it over. Um, so what great defense by the Firebirds right here at the end of the game. Partner, as as Wakefield was dribbling down the sideline into the throng of the crowd of Lakota West, their faithful. I was obscured. It looked like there was contact on that sideline. Yeah. They didn't call contact. They played on. They played on. I thought there was going to be a timeout. We were kind of looking at maybe doing a replay, but heck, they got the ball in and went. Coach Leon's like, I don't want them to set up their defense at all. As we got some extra time here now. Amir Rogers out there to jump center with Jason Lavender. And away we go here in overtime. As Fairfield will attack the south bucket, go left to right. Yep, running your Buffalo. Skip to my Lou, Tolbert. Across the post on the pass, resets. Krim Thong, thinking about three against Dudukovic. You know, we talked about West maybe being a 2-3 zone defensive team. And they're, we they're, stay up front. They're playing rock solid man defense tonight. They did the same thing a little bit against East. Not quite this good, but 
I've been extremely impressed with their half court defense. They work into Woods, free throw line extended. Left of the lane, 15 footer, no good. Look who got the rebound. Another one for Jason Lavender. Here comes West trying to take a lead with 3.25 to go here in this extra period. Dedugovic, center jump circle. Woods has had the assignment on him all night. Yeah, Woods has had him the whole second half. And he's held Dedugovic to two points in the second 16 minutes. Fairfield trying to turn up the D here and Dakota West being extremely patient. People are going to wake up tomorrow morning and look at this score, Jeff, and be extremely surprised because of how low it is, the scoring is. It's Curry, center jump circle. Is he going to try to get the last shot? <laughs> <laughs> is this a JV overtime? <laughs> Here's I'm, Lavender. It sure I'm, seems like it, they're right? They're not even looking to score. No. They're not looking to score. They're just passing the ball and being patient. Barber plays, Mayfield to Dukovic, triggers three, no good. Amir Rogers the rebound. That's not the shot they wanted. Contested three after all that time. It felt like a JV overtime it in did, the making. It did. Yep. Patience here. It's Grimm left of the lane. Outside. Tolbert triggers three. Too short. The rebound to Lavender once more. Design play for Fairfield. Every time they drive base like line like that, they'll come back for that little almost middle flare screen. 146 to go. Curry working in on Krim, nowhere to go. Layfield, left of the lane, drives, no good. Here comes Fairfield trying to take the lead. Tack. It's Krim driving baseline to the rack. No good. He gets the rebound. He loses it. It's out on the floor, and it will stay up front as Dudukovic was undercut. No foul call. We played on, and it's out of bounds. Tolbert got first to the floor. I always say that's the golden rule. First to the floor, you get the ball, and Fairfield got the ball because he was the first to the floor. And like you said, Dudukovic came in late there. Krim gets it on the entry. Do they run clock and get a final shot? It's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. It's a long time to ask these guys not to try to go attack the basket. What's low right? Posting up. What Skip outside. Three on the wing. It's an air ball for Colin Tolbert. Uh -oh. Here's a drive for Layfield. He drops off for Barber. It's out of bounds. And he heads the other way with 55.6 to go. Nobody has scored here in overtime. No, coach is looking at Layfield. He wanted him to shoot that. And he knows. He's looking over. I got it. I got it. A thriller in Fairfield tonight. It is. It's, I mean, it's a grinder. It's definitely a grinder. You know, they, they are going for the last shot here. 40 seconds to play. Tolbert controls. Will Coach Weirich take it down? Coney, top of the key, it's, stuck there. They call a timeout. He'll take it down, maybe get a timeout. And then that's when it's the chess match. Grim can't get away from there, Dukovic, there, and we get a timeout, the like timeout. you called it. Yep. He's going to get a set play. He's going to make sure the right person shoots the ball here. Who that right person might be, it's got to be Woods. I, I agree. Woods. I mean, he's the guy that's been pretty consistent tonight. Tobert has not had his best game. Tony has not had his best game. I think I go to Woods here. What, what do you do, do if you're do, Coach Leon? Right? Well, that's a good counter. Let me let me just add to your initial point yeah. on Fairfield. Logan Woods through the course of the season, not just tonight, he's got 10 points in the book unofficially, but he shot 45% from behind the arc. You know he's not afraid of the moment. No, he's not. He hit the big one against Sycamore, and Chatterbox had that game. He missed the shot against Sycamore. Fairfield got the offensive rebound, threw it out to him. He hits pretty much the game-winning three in that game. But right now, what do you do for Coach Leon? I say don't overthink it, Coach. Play rock solid half court man, just like you've been playing all night long. Don't do anything crazy. Don't come out in the 2-3 zone. Don't come out in anything crazy. Play rock solid, Mandy. Get the rebound, is what you're telling the guy. 
The thing I noticed about the Lakota West man is they've not overplayed very much at all tonight. If you overplay now, that might be a tragic mistake. They've been inside the gap. It's Coney with the ball. Here we go with 16 to play. Working in and timeout. Timeout again. Charge to Fairfield with 13.4 to go. So Coney was the linchpin in driving. Yeah. I don't know if I buy that as a strategy. I'm not sure that was. I'm not sure that's what Coach Lyric. I'm trying to look better now. I think he, he was looking at Woods, talking to him just now. That might have been a little miscommunication on that play. It didn't seem like that's what they wanted coming out of the timeout at all. Again, I'm, I'm going all Woods. Plenty of time. There's time, there's time, Jeff, right now with 13.4. First time for a shot and an offensive rebound. Okay? Stickbacks um, are huge in this situation. And Amir Rodgers, you know, is not in the game right now. So they're going all guards. Which their guards can rebound, as we as we know what kind of athlete Bronston is. He's the type of guy that can come off that weak side and get a tip dunk or right a tip rebound. Um, but 13 seconds, they're getting on the opposite side, which is good for Fairfield because they can use his whole right side. Is what and they love going right. They love going right. So they're getting the ball opposite side now, which means they go downhill to the right with 13.4 seconds to go. Well, we are jumping tonight here in Fairfield. Woods will trigger out of the timeout, side out of bounds to the top of your screen. Here we go, Coney with the ball, 12 seconds to play. And here he comes going Back right. Back to Woods, top of the key. He pumps 15 feet away! <laughs> and a timeout! What Fairfield a has the lead with four seconds to go! Mercy! What a great play again. We said they had the whole right side of the feet. Uh, of the court and they used it. Great play by Coach Wyrick coming out of the timeout there. Again, the guy taking it out, which was Woods, he was saying, yeah, a lot of times that's the best guy to come to on those side outs or even underneath out of bounds. And how about the mid-range stripper and not the three? Not the three, not the over -drip. They didn't over dribble. I felt like tonight a lot of over dribbling. Great mid-range by the right state commit. So if you're Jim Leon, you play for the tie or for the win? Well, with 5.4, it's probably going to be a three-point shot, depending on how Fairfield guards here. But right now, who do you go to, Coach Leon? I know the Dukovic is your guy. I know that. But man, William Layfield has been unbelievable tonight. I almost think with 5.4 as opposed to maybe say 2.4, you have enough time if you're Layfield to drive to the rack and tie it up. You do, you do. But if you had any less, it has to be a three out there. It has to be. So right now we'll see if they got Layfield getting the ball. It's hard for me not to get to the get the ball to Dukovic right now. Right. We'll be able to say see as they set up as Barber. Last time Barber threw it in, he threw it. He overthrew the ball and it was a turnover. He can run the baseline here. They got the Dukovic down. It looks like they're gonna try to go to Layfield right here. And here we go, folks. And here we go. Four to play. Layfield driving. Interrupted at the free throw line. He can't get the shot off. And what a finish here tonight in Fairfield. Mercy, what a finish. Great defense. Amir Rogers. Amir Rogers with a big defensive play there. Stepped up, made it tough for Layfield to get the shot off. Great play. Hats off to the Firebirds tonight. Holy cow. What a great coaching job by Coach Leon. I'll be honest with you. Fairfield didn't play very well tonight. But guess what, Jeff? The Firebirds had a whole lot to do with that. They certainly did. The game winner tonight to Logan Woods. The 15-footer straight on with five and a half seconds left to go. That decided this ball game as the Indians improved to 13-1. They still stay perfect in the Greater Miami Conference at 9-0. Lakota West lost to a record of 66. And on characteristically, 3-5 in the conference. We talked to Aaron Blankenship before the game the athletic director for Fairfield. One of the best in the business, if not in the whole area. Aaron Blankenship says, Coach Van Winkle, we're taking everybody's best punch, man. We took Sycamore's best punch. Now we have Lakota West's best punch. Right now, the Indians 
are the ones that everybody wants to beat. So every single night, they're going to take the other team's best punch. And right now, tonight, the Firebirds, they were punching hard, baby. They had a great game tonight. I, I, I'm going to tell you, how's your heart doing? It's awesome, man. I love it. <laughs> two, two Fridays in a row, we've been lucky to see some great basketball, great coaching on both ends. And, Coach, it's almost like you drew it up because it was a true defensive affair tonight. It was, and we talked about before the game, the keys to the game. It, if Coach Leon did what he said he was going to do, and he did, and that slowed that game down, I was I was truly impressed with both defenses, both defenses tonight. The Indians and the Firebirds played great D tonight. Time now for our headline sportswear play of the night. Partner, what's your pick? It has to be Logan Woods. He's hit big shots all year. He's their right state commit, Division One player, and he coach. Coach had a great play for him, going right side, downhill, just like we thought it was going to be, and he stopped with that mid-range jump. That has to be the play of the game. And it is our headlines play of the night, powered by Headline Sports, where, brother, what a finish tonight. Uh, and, and unexpected as a game, because when you have two teams that shoot this well from the floor and score so often, to see a defensive struggle go into overtime is truly unexpected, but totally well. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm gonna say something here. You said defensive struggle, and that's the term. But I think it was a defensive, unbelievable game plan. But that's the term that people use, defensive struggle. But it was a, and you're right, but it was a really, really good defensive game. A great defensive game. Now the Firebirds don't have long to so, no. to, to, I mean, you talked earlier. Uh, who, the, who they got coming up, and who does the Indians have coming up? Yeah, the Indians come up on Sunday. They'll take on St. Vincent, St. Mary over at Flying to the Hoop up in Dayton. And then tomorrow, Lakota West, no worse for the wear. They'll <laughs> be at home, and they'll take on Cole Rain tomorrow night in Beckett Ridge. Partner, boy, this was fun. Hopefully, as much as we've enjoyed week seven and eight, week nine will be even better yeah. next week. I don't know where Reed's sending this next Friday, but it better be an overtime game. <laughs> It better be an overtime game. So, Reed Mouse, the pressure's on to you. Next Friday, where are Jeff and I going to be? It better be an overtime game. <laughs> Amen to that. Partner, we'll see you next yep. week. Again, the final tonight in overtime. An instant classic here on Chatterbox Plus. 44-42, Fairfield escapes in overtime over Lakota West. Fairfield improves 13-1, 9-0 in the GMC. Lakota West is 6-6 six six after tonight, 3-5 in the conference. Thanks go out to our producers tonight, Reed Mouse and Josh Duran, our videographer, Ian Kallmeyer, and our statistician tonight, Mia Van Winkle. For the coach, Sean Van Winkle, I'm Jeff Kim. Good night from Fairfield.